folks, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome back to Best of Publishers, where I take a look at different publishers and tell you my favorite games from that publisher. Today we're going to take a look at Red Raven Games. Now, Red Raven Games is unique. Ryan Lockett, who is the founder of Red Raven Games, has designed most of the games from Red Raven. He's done the artwork and the graphic design and pretty much in charge of the publishing. He's also an accomplished musician. Now, that's not very unique per se uh, without the musician part. Well, there are a lot of companies where the person does their own art and own graphic design and then designs the games, but most of the time, they're pretty bad at it. In fact, if someone comes to me and says, I can do everything for my company, I say, no, you can't. Well, Ryan can and does an excellent job at them. Uh, he came on the scene a few years ago. I remember his first game was, uh, what was his first game? Empires of the Void, I believe, was the first one I played. But that one didn't get him a lot of recognition. It was really 8-Minute Empire that brought people to his door, and people were like, oh, this is very intriguing. Um, very similar to the same time that the Tiny Epic series came out. So 8-Minute Empire, and then Ryan has successfully, each time he comes out with a new game now, it is pretty much guaranteed to be a big hit. There are people lining up excited to try them out. So I'm going to go over my top eight favorite Red Raven games, and that's because Dingo's Dream, which is, uh, that is, I did not play that one, and I believe he only has nine games, kind of, sort of. You'll see. Here we go. Number eight is Eight Minute Empire. No, not because it's number eight. And it's not eight minutes either. It's like 15 minutes. But still, the idea of putting things out and moving along the board and trying to control different areas, it's done very effectively, very efficiently. I actually like it better than Tiny Epic Kingdoms and they're kind of in the same ballpark. Uh, but my number seven, actually, is 8-Minute Empire Legends. Now, there is some differences between these, and yeah, I'm kind of stretching to have them both, but uh, as you know, I put them on the bottom of the list. Again, interestingly enough, even though Ryan only has these certain number of games, I like them all, right? I don't know that I played any of his games where I did not like it. 8-Minute Empire Legends was a little bit more fantastical, added a few, mo a few minor rules, so I like it a little bit better than 8-Minute Empires. Number six is Above and Below. Now, I know that I'm kind of an outlier on this one. I think Above and Below is probably most people's favorite game that he's done. It is a good game. It is a game about building up a little city and then going, uh, that, that's the above part. Below, you go in and there's kind of a story and you have adventures and different things happen to you. And I like that the reason it's not as high as the other ones on this list is because the story part, while fascinating and interesting, is not very cohesive, which is fine but also is kind of secondary to the above part where building things and getting uh, combos of Euro game mechanisms and things is more important than the storytelling. The storytelling is almost a sideline to it. That doesn't mean it's a bad game. It's still a very good game. I just don't love it as much as everyone else. Number five is Artifacts Incorporated. This is a dice manipulation game. Now, dice manipulation games are games I like anyway. But in this one where you're going to roll the dice and then use those dice to get different artifacts, which allow you to roll more dice or to add or subtract from dice. It's, there's a lot of games that are like this, but Ryan's is smooth, it's simple, it's easy to get into. I'm surprised this one's not talked about more. I really enjoy it. Artifacts Incorporated. Number four is The Ancient World. This is a worker placement game in which you are basically getting forces. They either go up and fight these giant titans that are showing up and then making the ancient world love you. That's the whole point of this game. It's mean. There's a lot of, I'm putting workers here. Now you can't do it. Ha 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 type feeling in this game. There's some neat things where when someone dies, they, they teach the next soldiers that you have some of their skills. And then the artwork, of course, as it is in all of Ryan's games, is incredible. But this is possibly some of his best. Highly recommend it. Number three is Empires of the Void. This was his first game that came out. It's a space game. Now, there's a lot of games that I have on my shelf, but there's not that many space games, uh, at least where you're fighting other people, uh, because they're hard to make, and many of them aren't that good. But his was unusual for a few reasons. One, as you moved around and went to different planets, some planets, if you controlled them, would give you a unique ship that no one else had. Other planets would give you special bonuses. So when you were expanding, it wasn't like, oh, this one gives two resources, this one gives three resources. No, each planet had kind of like a defined history. Like, oh, when you go to that one, you now can build these, these cool little fast ships. Ooh, that's neat. I need to control that planet to be able to do that. That's a cool concept. Also, it looked great. It was a fun space game and really put Ryan on the board for me, Empires of the Void. Number two is City of Iron. City of Iron, they just came out with the second edition of it last year. City of Iron is a great 
Euro resource game, but I was kind of glad it wasn't just, hey, get silk and stuff. No, there's all kinds of weird resources. It takes place in an alternate fantasy setting, but there's more to it than just that. There's a deck building aspect to this game and a deck building where you can kind of control the order of the cards in the deck. And I like that. It's neat. Each person had a very, especially when the second edition, a very unique race to some degree. You would get hiring people from other races. You have to just sit there and go, which cards am I going to buy? Uh, to put in my deck, and then am I going to go out and collect these resources, discover new lands? It, it's a really fully realized game. It's very good. It almost leans towards the medium heavyweight of Euro games. Just a really well done design. And number one for me is Islebound. Now this one I heard a lot of buzz about last year, but not as many people are talking about now. But Islebound, the more I talk about it, the more I play it, the more I like it. Where you're just going around from, from island to island, you are discovering, uh, or you're going to these islands and either conquering them or winning them over diplomacy and getting resources and going back. And it has a kind of a point scoring system where you get enough points and then you, you round around again. It's hard to explain, but go watch my review of it. I really enjoy this one. It's simple. It's easy to get into. It's not really that different from other games uh, where you go and collect this and come over here. It's almost a pickup and delivery system. But it just plays so well. There's so many choices you have in your turn. It's a plethora of fun options. Again, the good artwork. Again, some fun things that can happen over the course of the game. An interesting combat system. That is Islebound. Red Raven Games is an anomaly. All right? If you're out there and you can design and you can draw and you can graphic design and you can make your own games and publish them, then good for you. But most people can't do it. But Ryan has pulled it off. So again, the point where Red Raven Games, a new game is coming out. I think this year he's coming out with uh, Near and Far, which is uh, a sequel to Above and Below. And I guarantee you that one's going to be a big hit just on basis of his name alone. Great job, Red Raven Games. We can't wait to see what you do in the future. Thanks for watching. This has been Tom Basil, and you're watching the best of publishers today, Red Raven Games. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.